Despite the fact that the cosmos has been around for about 13.7 billion years, there are still many unanswered questions that astronomers are working to resolve. There are so many possibilities for what is beyond our reach. Cosmic abnormalities abound, including dark energy, cosmic rays, and the peculiarities of our own solar system. As opposed to how gravity and other physical laws work on our small planet, the vastness of space is filled with mystery and unpredictability. What are the unusual space occurrences that have startled and perplexed scientists? Join us as we explore how an old satellite accidentally turned on again and discovered something terrifying. Satellites are crucial for accessing essential services and for space exploration. There are literally thousands of satellites orbiting the Earth at any given time, both operational and inactive. Others may remain in orbit years after they are no longer needed, while some satellites are destroyed upon re-entry into Earth's atmosphere. These satellites are normally still in orbit because they encounter a problem during operation that prevents them from being controlled remotely, and as a result, people frequently forget about them. Zombie satellites are the name for these roving spacecraft. Yet not all of them are totally lost because a connection can occasionally be re-established after they are found. Let's take a brief trip back in time to the Cold War era. The United States military was modernizing during the Cold War and timely, accurate intelligence from all over the world was essential. At the time, America had left Korea but had moved to Vietnam. The US military could travel almost anywhere in the world in a matter of hours, but once there, a key problem was the absence of trustworthy long-distance communications. With different military branches in the air, on land and at sea, communication was necessary. To support COTM communications on the move with vehicles, aircraft and ships, command and control communications are required. In the early to mid-1960s, there was no one tactical communication system that could meet those demands. The creation of today's communication satellites was driven by the need for international military communication. The inception of the Tactical Satellite Communication Program serves as the first act of the story, TSCP. At the beginning of 1965, the TSCP reiterated its aim for tactical satellite communications for every position on Earth. Using UHF satellite frequencies, the US Air Force started a project to provide low-rate digital communications for airborne forces. In cooperation with the Aerospace Corporation, the Air Force Projects Management Team designed and executed the experiment to test UHF satellite communications. Radio frequency interference effect studies were carried out at the MIT Lincoln Lab. They sought a solution that would hold up in the woods and during bad weather. Conceptual changes made by Lincoln Lab, which already had an Air Force contract, led to the creation of the experimental satellite that would soon be launched by a Titan 3C rocket. The teletype for communication was a readily available commercial model. Tiny, solid-state receivers and 1,000-watt output airborne transmitters. In order to detect and report interference, they also created specialized antennas and delicate equipment that could be mounted on the satellite. This led to the creation of the Lincoln experiment with satellite number 5, often known as LES-5. In June 1967, the spacecraft was transported to Cape Kennedy, Florida, where it was scheduled to launch alongside five other satellites. It was only put into orbit on July 1, 1967, aboard the Titan 3C rocket. The satellite was made accessible to universities for research and testing once all the tests, which showed 100 words per minute teletype, voice and facsimile communications, were finished. The military then switched to larger, more potent LES-6 satellites. The LES-5 satellite's one and sole battery, which had just one job, to shut it off after five years, was programmed to turn it off once the testing was finished. It seemed to be the only thing on the satellite that was broken. 
Les 5, a long forgotten satellite, was found to be still transmitting a beacon signal on March 4, 2020, after having been in orbit for 53 years and 49 years after it was supposed to be turned off. A handful of people have made it a pastime to locate these rogue and abandoned satellites, and Scott Tilley, a Canadian amateur radio operator, has even assisted NASA in getting in touch with a few of them, including the lost NASA probe in 2005. Tilly shared the enthusiasm of those who belong to these clubs for locating the oldest satellites. He was able to find the 1965-launched nuclear-powered U.S. Navy navigation satellite Transit 5B-5. He had the LES-5 satellite in mind, which was a much older target. This spacecraft might be the oldest operational satellite in geostationary orbit if it were currently in operation. Tilly had devoted his career to the pursuit of the elusive LES-5 satellite and went through online documentation for hours before figuring out what radio frequency the satellite used to operate. He then started the difficult task of constructing a framework to hold a large antenna that would pick up the frequency. Tilly was finally rewarded for his work on March 24th when he picked up radio measurements of the LES-5 as it orbited the Earth. However, as he continued to study the ancient satellite, he was in for a surprise. The LES-5 was not only still in the Earth's atmosphere, but it also appeared that its radio did not switch off as anticipated in 1972 and continued to operate with the support of the solar panels attached to it. After all these years, there is a very good chance that the LES-5 satellite could be touched once more. Despite the excitement over this finding, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology's Lincoln Laboratory, which built the satellite, has not commented on its unexpected reappearance. Given that the lab was known to have collaborated with the US military on a number of projects, many people think this is proof that the LES-5 was utilized for top-secret military programs. This implies that despite years of radio quiet, the zombie satellite may still be hiding some information. Yet a partnership between NASA and the European Space Agency has led to a number of fascinating discoveries regarding the solar system and its many enigmatic objects. The sighting of water jets over Enceladus, one of Saturn's moons, was among Cassini's interesting findings. This groundbreaking finding has created a whole new range of opportunities for the study of the solar system and the search for extraterrestrial life. Enceladus is a tiny icy moon with a subterranean ocean of liquid water thought to exist beneath its icy crust. This discovery was made in 2005 when Cassini noticed that other volatile substances being ejected into space from Enceladus contained water vapor. Further studies showed that these water jets were erupting from structures on the icy surface of the moon, which led researchers to speculate that Enceladus contains an ocean beneath its surface. Several factors make the finding of water jets over Enceladus significant. First off, there is undeniable evidence that the Moon has a subterranean ocean, which is essential for the emergence of life. Second, the water jets give researchers a way to investigate the deep ocean and look for potential life signs. Finally, the discovery of water jets over Enceladus increases the prospect that additional planets throughout the solar system may also have subterranean seas that are home to life. Questions regarding the geology of the Moon and its potential for further research have also been brought up by the discovery of water jets over Enceladus. The water is erupting from the subterranean ocean, according to scientists, and is being driven by heat from deeper within the Moon. Enceladus could have a heat source that is also fueling geological activity, making it a fascinating target for upcoming expeditions. The discovery of canyons that are submerged in a liquid is only one of several significant discoveries made by the Cassini mission regarding Titan's geology. In 2013, Cassini identified enormous Grand Canyon-like landforms on Titan's surface, leading to the discovery of these canyons. 
Concerns regarding the possibility of life on the Moon have also been raised by the finding of liquid-filled canyons on Titan. One of the locations in the solar system with the potential to look for evidence of extraterrestrial life is Titan. Titan is a great area to look for prebiotic chemistry because according to scientists, its circumstances may be similar to those on Earth before life developed. The supermassive black hole in Stevens Quintet can be seen in a previously unheard of way thanks to the James Webb Space Telescope's near-infrared spectrometer. The spectrometer can determine the chemical makeup of objects in space by dissecting light into its component wavelengths. It has shown that the atmosphere encircling the black hole contains iron ions, molecular hydrogen and atomic hydrogen. With this knowledge, researchers may examine the composition of the gas the black hole is consuming and expelling, as well as the radiation that results from the compression of gas and dust. The near-infrared spectrometer is an essential instrument for figuring out the chemical composition of cosmic objects, such as stars, galaxies, planets and black holes. What are your thoughts on these recent discoveries? Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.